Hey, what's going on everyone? Juan Valdez here and today in this video, I wanted to walk you guys through a live student interview that my business partner and I did with two of our students that are now making anywhere from three to five K a day with their e-commerce business and last month cleared over 50 thousand dollars in sales so uh, they've been through quite a journey so far and up to this point and i wanted to kind of get some insight from them and figure out you know what kind of helped them from the time they got started in e-commerce you know all the way up to date to where they've obviously taken their business to so what i actually did is i'm going to be switching screens over and i did a screen share uh, with them we had a skype call and so once we transition over you guys will see it'll be me and my business partner and uh, both Pau and Narcisse they're both from Barcelona and these guys have incredible stories because they actually started off just like me and my business partner started off they you know they, they were going to school um, and then from there they transitioned on to starting their e-commerce business and things weren't working out for them at first they had a pretty interesting journey and from there you know things kind of took a change and uh, because they kept their efforts and uh, kept persisting through they were actually able to you know get a breakthrough and uh, have success with their e-commerce business so i hope you guys enjoy this student interview we'll make the transition over and have you guys tune in and see everything that we talked about i hope you guys uh, get a ton of value from it i'm sure you guys will be able to relate with some of you guys will be able to relate with some of these guys as far as their story and all and um, yeah hope you guys enjoy the interview Yeah, we can start off with you guys' story and then obviously we'll kind of go and, um, you know, kind of fill in some of the other things. Uh, some of the things you already spoke about, we can kind of cover those as well as we go. Um, but yeah, fill us in. Okay, so um, a quick recap from so right now would be like, I think more than one year ago, we dropped out of university and actually the... the what we wanted to do initially was do Amazon FBA, mm -hmm. but that required a little bit more capital. So we came across drop shipping from mm -hmm. Ty Lopez and, and you guys. Yeah. And we did it like 10 or 11 months ago. We did Ty Lopez course on the how to make money online. And that is where I, I met you. Yeah. And then I did your course and a few other ones. And and then we, we just started from there, start fine. We made the, the first store was an each store and it did not work. We wasted like $500 with that one and we made only one single sale. Wow. One sale from that wow. one. And the same day I, we made that sale, I think we closed the store because it was like, <laughs> okay, we made a sale, but this is definitely not working. Nice. So then we opened another store, the second one, which was an each store, it was on the baby niche and then we made there a little bit more but still it did not work out we only made I think like 10 20 sales in one or two months and then, so we closed that one too and then we went to a general store nice. and this is the one that worked the third store and the first month I think this was in August we made 2000 the next month we made six thousand. The next one eighteen thousand, and then last month we made fifty k, and now we're like at five k a day. Almost. Nice man, amazing. Around one hundred orders a day, yeah. Amazing. Congrats to you guys. Yeah, shout out to yeah. you guys for that. Yeah, so, so your right, story right. sounds pretty similar to our story, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I think I think when we with our first store, our first store definitely we uh, we wiped it after like a couple of days. Because uh, obviously, yeah. I, it was my idea to think that it would be a, a good idea to, because I was into fitness and, you know, working out, to sell right. products that I would buy. So I figured, you know, I like barbell keychains. I'd buy that. Yeah. Why not? Let's sell that. <laughs> and so I can definitely, yeah. uh, I can definitely relate. I don't remember exactly how much we spent on the first store, but I know we spent a few hundred for sure. And mm -hmm. I don't even think yeah. we made any sales right. on that one. On um, the first one, we definitely didn't make any sales either. Yeah, so it's honestly it's crazy to hear because yeah. very similar to our story too. Well, what can I ask you guys this question? What made you guys? Uh, first of all, what made you guys want to start an online business? Like, what made you want to drop out and start an online business? Was it, you know, to help out your family? Was it because you guys were just looking for some, you know, an extra stream of income, or was it something that you guys oh, yeah. like? Hey, I know this is the future. And the second question is, how did you two meet? 
and how did you guys start working together and you know okay. kind of go through the, the the failures together but still stick it out to you know come out yeah here so we, we met in university and we went to a university about entrepreneurship it was not like a regular university we had a different kind of education you made more practical you actually made your business in that university a local business wow and, and they put you together with other people and you had to create mini projects and things like that but the problem was that even in that kind of environment we were not learning as much as we thought it was necessary to do things properly so after one year of being there we we dropped out and we knew a little bit because we have been following for example Ty Lopez and people like that for a long time yeah like two years plus or maybe even three years before that and when we were in the in that university we knew that the things we were doing in there were not exactly right with it. they were not alienated where we wanted to go exactly with our goals and when we dropped out we didn't know exactly what we wanted to do but there were like a few things that were clear we had a little bit of knowledge as i said with amazon fba and a few more things like some some social media things and i don't know we just heard of the drop shipping and we had in that moment some skills that were good to get into that area i mean there's no specific path but it just everything fell together yeah yeah i think like it was like the situation was we were at university we were spending like a lot of money yeah. it's really expensive um we do not come from like really rich background so it was it was something that we had to like to think about right um and we just like we were thinking like what do we want in life we don't know what do we want in life but we know we want to have like financial freedom and be able to do whatever we want whenever we want and that was not the right path <laughs> yeah so we had to make a decision and we just like well we, if you think about who's the richest person in the world right now is Jeff Bezos yeah and he's doing Geekom so <laughs> that makes sense right. so yes um, yeah. sorry no so that's that's very accurate it's <laughs> a great great path yeah. and person to follow for sure yeah. yeah I think it's just like Geekom is growing like crazy and like it's like it, it would not make sense to not go into this kind of business right now yeah absolutely man absolutely Nice. So it sounds like okay. It sounds like very similar to ours. Yeah, definitely honestly. very I mean, similar to to us yeah. as well. Yeah, like you guys are just going to college. You know, you realized you went with the right intention. Like I, for example, I went to school for marketing and entrepreneurship as well. And I, I thought it was in the best school, like in New England. You know, in my where I live in my region, that was the number one school for entrepreneurship and and marketing. And once I started going there after a year and a half i realized like all my you know all my textbooks were made by big accounting firms so they were just trying to make us employees to go work yeah. for those accounting yeah, companies exactly. and so we were like you know i was like this is this is weird you know this is not right i want to become an entrepreneur that's why i came here and so that's when i started you know myself finding guys like ty guys like um you know the, the legends right jim Rohn, tony robbins and you know i found myself and, and you know juan related on this too we found ourselves reading like you know these kind of books right here you know more than we would read uh you know more than we would read like our college textbooks right because reading this is you know reading something like this something like this you know like this like it's all about how to make more money you know it's not how to become an employee i mean yeah you could use it become an employee but you know, it's all about how to make more money and how to become, you know, a real entrepreneur. So, uh, yeah, we got into door to door sales after dropping out. So you guys got you guys <laughs> skipped the curve. <laughs> yeah, which is which, we, which is honestly incredible to see because I mean, that's how it should be. Right. The only reason why we went into door to door sales is just because we didn't have anyone to kind of point us and say, hey, like e -com, you guys should try out e -com. This is yeah. what's possible. We didn't have that many, like we knew people were making money online actually. Samir knew more about people making more money online than I did. So for me, I'm like, 
you know, door to door is the only opportunity that I got shown personally. But for you guys, obviously, since now you have a lot more people that's showing what's possible. You have guys like Jeff Bezos yeah. who's at the top of the food chain. And you have all the resources online and you hear about it so often. It's like it makes all the sense for you guys to kind of skip, you know, trying to do, for example, sales and just go to e-commerce since you already have the necessary information. Because uh, that's something for sure. Like when I was when I dropped out of school, like I didn't have anyone that I could literally learn about like mm-hmm. e-commerce from like I had heard about it, like drop shipping. But like it wasn't as common as it is now. And like there wasn't as many people talking about it for sure. Yeah. It was limited amount of people talking about it. So. Yeah, for you guys, it makes all the sense as to why you would just skip ahead and skip in between anything else and just go straight to this because you already had all the resources pretty much to kind of start learning from. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was on. That's honestly incredible. That's incredible. I, I have a question for, for you guys is, OK, so because I remember it might have been before we hit the record button. You guys said you started two niche stores, right? Two niche stores that failed. And then the third one, the general store is, is what? started doing good which is actually something we can relate to as well um and so can you guys take us through that journey of starting off right uh for everybody that's watching right now i'm sure there's a lot of people who haven't even started yet right there there's a lot of people who take you know a lot of time just doing this just taking notes and just watching videos but they never actually start because of fear right so what what how do, can you guys take us through that process, that initial phase before you got your success? Just like as you're testing, you know, like when you're first starting off, what was the thoughts running right. in your head? Right. So I think before starting the, that phase that you were mentioning, when you were just studying things, I think that lasted for at max one month. So I watched the entire Dai Locos course in like two weeks or less. Yeah. And then I think I did yours and something else. And then we, we started right there. Nice. And I think that, as you said, the, the most important thing is to get started. And you don't even know, I, you, you don't even need to know exactly what you're doing. Just, for example, if you're doing drop shipping with Shopify, just open the store, open the business manager on Facebook and start clicking everyone. Start, start to get to know exactly what every option does and get to know the platform. And then when you start to understand exactly what you what the platform is for, what you can do with it, then you start to feel more confident about what you're doing and all the fear and all that disappears. And then the, the action to, to start it just it just falls naturally. Say say that last part one more time. You said what? It just ca- happens yeah, naturally? So, yeah, exactly. Oh, so God. when you start to understand every single part when you get to know Shopify a little bit more, the business manager, when you try those initial things, when you start to have this understanding of everything, then it gets easier and easier, the fear disappears, and mm. it's more easy to continue, exactly. Yeah, I think there's a lo- uh, another thing that is like, well, it was like really shocking for me, because when we started, I was like, the first day we, I remember the first day we, day we made like um, $100. Just $100. Yeah. yeah. And that was crazy. I, I remember, like, oh my God, $100 just a day. Oh my God. Um, and right now, we do less than 3K a day. It's like, fuck, that's a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> I love but, it, man. Yeah, so the perception about like how everything goes and how everything works, it's like, it's just completely different. Like a month ago, you, you told me that I, was, I would be doing like 5K a day. I would say, I would have said yeah. it was possible, like, no yeah. way, for real, like, no way. Yeah. And right now we are looking to to go even higher and try to go for, like, 10K days and, and even more, right? Yeah. So the perception of time is, like, it's going crazy. Like, I, I, I would not know how to explain it. It's just, like, it's completely crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Again, you know, congrats to you guys. Uh, you know, you guys worked hard. You deserved it. I mean, you put in the work for it. And you, it's clear, like, it wasn't something you guys, like, tripped and fell into and you got lucky. Like, it's clear from your story that you guys started up a store. You failed at it. Like, yeah, although you got some signs of success to keep you, to motivate you to keep moving forward, you know, you failed at that first store. Then you started up the second store. What would you say, what was the difference between uh, the first niche store and the second one? Like, was it maybe just, you guys thought it was a better niche? Or was it, like, a... What was it? So 
the main difference with the, the first niche that we did was like items for like the space theme. So yeah. like NASA t-shirts and telescopes and things like that. And basically because it's something that we slightly were interested in and we yeah. looked at Google Trends and we thought, oh yeah, this is going to be an, an amazing idea. We're going to make a lot of money with this. But yeah. in reality, it's similar to what you were saying about the fitness products. We kind of were interested in that, but not that much people was interested. Yeah. And with the second one, the baby niche, it's more obvious that more people is interested in that, but the, the reason I think the second one failed, even though it's a good niche, because the baby niche is a, it's undeniably a very good niche. But the Absolutely. problem was, I think, our skills, mostly with Facebook ads and the product selection. Mm. I think the reason that store failed, because the design was pretty good, uh, and the theme, everything was perfect, but the product selection that we need and the Facebook strategies and everything, was not now looking back i realized that it was not right and then we jumped to a general store because we thought that it was more efficient to have a general store where we can test anything mm -hmm. and then we don't have to spend and waste more time doing new stores to try new things so we can just make a general store try anything learn and then maybe in the future when we get everything sorted out and start to understand things then maybe we can go into niche stores and specialize on something and that is actually a really that is the strategy right there that we encourage a lot of uh, our students to do is is that yeah. exact one is to go general um, because what happens is when you go general is you just you you open yourself up to more opportunity right you you can say yes quicker you can test quicker you can uh, yeah you could has different products quicker, right? As opposed to have, if you have a niche store like that, that uh, space one, in order for you to, you know, test out a baby product that you see doing really well, you're gonna have to start a whole new store, right? A whole new store, you know, a whole nother niche yeah. for it. And so when you have a general store, especially for beginners, again, it just allows you to add a lot of different products at once to, to one store. Of course, you have to keep it organized and you have to keep it professional. Uh, and neat so you don't confuse your, your customers. But at the same time, the ability to test quickly is huge. It's huge when you're starting off, right? Because it's just, it's just gonna be a lot easier for you to add products, launch an app. Add products, launch an app. And so one, one before we get into that general store and like kind of what happened there, like what started clicking for you guys there, I want to ask you guys about the first dollar that you guys made online. Was that the first dollar that you guys made online, like on Shopify? That cha-ching, you know, yeah. the <laughs> you guys are you guys actually, had your notifications actually, on? Yeah, actually, the first sale that we made, uh, we did not have the app on the phone installed properly, you got so it. we did not hear the cha-ching. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> right. Got it. But yeah, on the next ones, yeah, it was really exciting. And uh, at the beginning, when you were just making like five sales a day or even two, when that sound goes on, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But then you get used to it, and that's even that's even better. When you get used to it, and it starts to get annoying. Yeah. That's yeah, you, you gotta know, shut it off. Like, yeah. Your place. yeah. <laughs> uh, let Let me one one to go deeper into that a little bit. Like, do you guys remember when you made your first couple sales? Because we remember. I remember. Uh, I had I had quit door to door sales like a little bit too quickly. I quit my door to door sales career like uh, as soon as we started getting a hold of like some spyware tools and stuff like that. It just really kind of helped me realize that what's what the potential is of e-commerce because I was like, hey, Juan, like if we can see all the trending products, all the products that are doing well and we can spy on every single Shopify store, then our success is inevitable. You know, what I mean, it's just a matter of time and finding that right product. And so I quit door to door and then Juan would be going uh, and then that he would have the app on his phone. Right. And it would be like cha ching. And so he's like talking to homeowners like cha ching. And then it got to a point where it just kept going and he was like he couldn't like do door to door anymore and, and be able to have the notifications on and talk to customers because he'll be talking to customers and just be like cha ching cha ching cha ching. Do you guys remember right. when that happened? Like where you guys were at? Were you guys in school in class or? 
when it started to go great, go crazy, you mean? Yeah, just when you started getting your first couple of sales, like when you started realizing, oh, like, hey, I can make sales. money no matter where I'm at. You know what I mean? No matter where I'm at in the world. Well, the, the realization of that actually we had it from the beginning because we, as you said in the beginning, we we saw other people do it, so it was clear for us right from the beginning that that was possible. Got it. But. But when it started to get real, like this is happening and we're making it, was I think for real maybe one month ago, last month when we made the 18K, and especially these past few days when we are making these 5K days, it's like when you see one of those and you see the profits and all the money that's coming in, it's yeah. like you just look at it and feel this is really real, this is what we've been working so hard for so many months. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And that's the key part there too, though, because a lot of people are going to watch this video. Some of you guys that are watching, uh, they're going to, you know, they're going to assume like, yeah, these guys are doing 5K a day, but maybe they did it, you know, maybe they just started doing it like last, last week or last month. But in reality, all of the work that you guys started doing back nine months ago, it's all a compounding effect. So that's what has led to now you guys making 5K a day. A majority of people that come into this space, They'll try out one product on one store, one ad, and two days after, after they spend $10, that's it. They don't get any sales. They automatically want to quit. So they don't realize the fact that when you speak to guys like you guys that stick it all the way through, that put in the work, you guys show what's possible after um, you know, a certain amount of period of time. Because everybody comes in here, and they're not trying to wait. They're thinking, like, if they're not getting a sale by the end of the day, the first day they launch an ad, like they're already giving up. So that's one of the things that we want to make sure everybody understand is like these how they're doing 5k a day it's all compounded from nine months worth of work it's not like they just came in last month learned everything like it takes time but if you put in the time and effort like this is what's possible right this is a perfect example of you know people that were resourceful guys that put their heads together decided to work together and actually follow through on everything they learn because also a lot of people come in they'll take some notes maybe on this video or other videos but they'll never implement what they actually learn and so until, yeah. you, until you implement just like how you guys did, you can't really see the result of what you've learned. Because yeah. if you're just learning all the time, you're not implementing well, you're never going to know if it's working or not. So it, it's, it's great to hear, obviously, from you guys that it's you, all compounded over the last few months. Yeah, this, is, this, is, yeah. this is one of our favorite books right here that we like to show uh, anybody that, that really uh, is just getting started in the e-commerce space is is this thing called the J curve. So let me show you guys here. You guys probably already read this book, literally one of my favorite ones because it just summarizes, uh, it just summarizes, let me see if I can get it, oops. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, there you go. The six phases of the J curve. So this point right here, eh, it's so hard. <laughs> this point right here, right, in the bottom, like this point in the bottom right here, right? <laughs> right here after the initial phase of creating and releasing so what everybody does when they're starting with e-commerce right is going to create their shopify store because it's so there's tons of tutorials online about how to create a shopify store right yeah. and you can set it up for yeah. free so everybody goes ahead and says okay i'm starting my e-commerce business today which you guys said nine months ago right you're like okay i'm gonna create my shopify store boom takes a couple of hours okay i'm gonna find yeah. some products Boom, add some space products. And then what happens is, as soon as you launch it, right? This is the point, this third step here is launching, right? And when you launch something, that's when the market, the market says, hey, this is a good product, this is a good store, this is a good business, or it's gonna say, no, this is not what the market is looking for, and you're not gonna make any money, right? And so what happens is, once people release, they, they, they launch their first Facebook ad or their first Instagram influencer shout out or whatever, right? And it doesn't get them results. This is called the valley of death. This is where 99% of people stop, right? This is where people don't want to put in that extra nine months to get to this breakthrough right here to start seeing the real benefits. You know what I mean? Because when you're starting a business... Yeah. Right when you're starting a business, so can you hear us? Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, yeah. got it. So when you're starting a business, right, you're investing your money, 
right? You're investing money, you're investing energy. So technically you're like negative on your investment, right? Cause you haven't made any money yet. You haven't gotten any success yet. So you're like negative. All you're doing is investing and then some more. And so this right here, again, this is the reason why most people give up here is because this is when you do the simple things. You get your LLC, you set up your website. It's all that simple stuff that anybody can do. But after this point right here is this is the point where where you launch your first product it doesn't do good and you got to go back to the drawing board and launch another one and then if it doesn't work you go back launch another one because guess what would you guys agree with us on this statement or not that one product can take you from here and just boom right it can make up for all those fail so let's let's get into that all right how you guys were at this point right here two stores couple hundred bucks in the toilet how'd you guys get out of it um well i actually did a consulting call with another like dropshipper because right when we closed the the second store we were like in one of those points that it's like you don't want to quit because you know it's, it's possible it's what we i was saying at the beginning you know there's people doing it but we, we, up to that point, we had failed for like five straight months or even six months, you wow. know? So we were kind of lost. So we did one consulting call with, with one guy and that gave us a little more direction. And, and, and we just tried again. To be honest, there's, there's no specific formula. We just kept trying it, just like keep hitting it. And eventually you keep learning those those things that are essential to make something work and if you you stay consistent because this is another thing like for the past nine months we've done nothing but this literally like all day working on this that's yes. so all day and an incredible amount of of energy put into this and now it's starting to pay off after eight months nine months nice man beautiful yeah i i believe like there's no like for someone who's starting right now, it's completely possible. Like when I started, when I, when we back back when we started, the first months I was always thinking like, is this real? Like, is this real? Like, is these people really making this much money? Like, I don't believe them. Like, this is not possible. And now I can say like, everyone can do it. It's like you don't gotta be like pretty smart. You just gotta keep working. Like, keep trying one product and another one, and you will lose money, and you will be mad and. and just keep trying, keep trying, and keep trying, and keep learning, of course. Um, and then you'll find a winner, and then everything just blows. Like, yeah, it, like it goes crazy. And then you gotta, you don't gotta get like, you gotta keep working. Like, you gotta keep finding new products, keep trying new ones. Um, just keep going all the time. If you don't stop, you'll get there at some point. I'm hundred percent sure. Got it. I'm sure. I'm sure you guys know of that quote, right? The true definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, right? So yeah. I, I want I really want to know though, like there there has to be something that you guys did differently from the first two stores to the second. So was it something with your advertising? Was it the way that you guys were uh, selecting products? Is it the fact that you guys just went from a niche store to general that allowed you to test more products with the same kind of strategy? Like what? What was what that? Was basically, what was the tipping point? Yeah, that took you guys from obviously yeah. the you know the first two stores to actually getting results to with the third store. Yeah. Um, or at least, I what do you? I know it's probably no hard to. Thing, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I, I think there's no not one single thing, but. The, the main ones are the way we did our ads and our videos, the product selection, obviously that was a big one because I think the products we did before were horrible and especially the way we did our ads, even though uh, you gotta know how to do Facebook ads to make this work. So it, it's not just making any ads or any audience or, or I see a lot of people that make videos of products that are, are just completely crap. You gotta make good content, there's a lot of competition, and you gotta stand out. Um, so the, the main elements that make something work in, in e-commerce, I think 
the first one is a video. Well, the first one is the, the product. Okay, yeah. the product's good and the web page is okay and the and the video is okay, but nothing special. But if the product is a good one, you will you will get those sales. But then, if the product is really good and the video is really good and the web page is really good, I think those are the main three things that that matter. So yeah, it's not one single thing. It's all those put together into one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And then also like Facebook ads because like with uh, with the the biggest problem we had right now um, we didn't really like find out it was a winner from the beginning because we because we didn't have like a specific strategy with Facebook Facebook ads um, and then we we started to follow in one one of them it was pretty aggress aggressive but but we had to try and and it was game changing like yeah. completely so. There are products that won't look like a winner at the beginning, but then you gotta stick to, to one methodology or one way to do Facebook ads, and then they suddenly start blowing up. Oh, that's that's interesting right there. I like that because that's where most pe that's what most people don't understand about Facebook advertising is they think that a winning product you're gonna be able to tell like within five dollars, right? Spending like five dollars. Yeah. But it, but it's this this consistent. <laughs> he's laughing. He's like, that's not how it works at all, because it's this consistent uh, gathering of data and being able to analyze that data and see, okay, like this audience right here, like let's go more on it, and then this audience right here maybe is no good, so let's kill this down, and then let's scale this audience up. So, I definitely do agree with you guys. So, I mean, that's something we always stress. Because there's a lot of people out there stressing that there's, it's only one thing that creates your success. Like, oh, it's only the product. Oh, it's only the, 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 uh, the ads that you're doing. It's only the store that you're running. And it's like, it, it's false. It's, a, it's an ecosystem, you know? Like, imagine a Louis Vuitton store or a Gucci store that didn't have the right location, uh, luxury type of setting to it, and didn't have... Um, you know, just everything that a Gucci store has, right? If we take away the location of a Gucci store, boom, it doesn't do as well, right? If we put Gucci store in the middle of nowhere, it's not gonna work. If we, uh, let's say like, we made the Gucci store look like a TJ Maxx or, you know, a Marshalls or a Macy's, boom, it's not gonna work, you know? So everything has to be congruent. Now, one thing I, I wanna know too is like, uh, what, how do you guys kind of split up your, how do you guys, work together like what trends do you guys focus on you know who who takes care of what um, <laughs> i would say like it depends got we it. are changing all the time got like um i think Bao is like he's really really good at, at computing and, and editing the web pages and all the like computing stuff like he's really good at it and not <laughs> Yeah. I'm better maybe at like creating the videos or something like this, um, but I think we are changing. Like we don't have like a like a, a role and we don't move from that from it. It's just yeah. like always changing. Now you're doing this. Now I'm doing that. Um, we just work fine. We 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 did work fine in university. Yeah. Like, um, I think that's difficult to find. Like to find a partner that, that you work well with. It's really, really hard. Like yeah. people don't realize how hard it is. Yeah. But then when you find someone, it's just like you don't even think about it. It's just, it's just yeah. work. Yeah. Right. You, you just get a lot of things up very quickly, easily. Yeah. No friction. Yeah. Yeah. I I would rec. And this is something that Juan and I are still uh, we're still struggling to like master, right? Because the ability to focus on your strengths is something that's highly underestimated, right? Especially us as young entrepreneurs, yeah. when we're looking on Facebook, when we're looking on Instagram or on YouTube, and we see guys like Gary or whatever doing like a million things at once, right? Doing like, they're doing a million things at once, man. Like it looks like they're building a million businesses at, at once. Yeah. And, and we're like, what? Like, okay, well, I'm only doing this one thing, so I must be doing something wrong. And, and quite honestly, it's the opposite, okay? It's the opposite. There is there's, uh, tons of great books. And if we look at any great entrepreneurs, like, like really, really great entrepreneurs, like guys like Warren Buffett, guys like Bill Gates, guys like Jeff Bezos, right? They really do focus 
on one core activity. Now, don't get me wrong. They do like, you know, know what's going on here. They know what's going on in this business and this, but they also have admitted to themselves like, hey, this is my, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not good at. Right. And so what that hap what happens is now you get to double down on your strengths. But one thing that I do want to stress is it's completely fine too to start off. I mean, we actually encourage it and every single person we've interviewed really on, on Secure the Back podcast uh, agrees like you got to try out every single part of the business, you know, so you want to be making the videos, then you want to see how the ads do, then you want to see how to build the store, you want to see how to, you know, uh, do the customers, customer support. And then you'll be able to, to know, okay, this is my strength. This is what I'm not good at, or we don't even need to be good at customer support, right? Because I know before we got on this call, you guys are talking about, so we can kind of segue we can in. Talk about those things. Yeah, yeah. We, we can just uh, segue in here, yeah. I guess, to you know, how you guys can, can really start scaling up is you got to understand the value of time. Sam Ovens, he created a video on this yesterday uh, that I haven't actually gotten the, ch the chance to watch yet. Maybe you did. I didn't yet, but I saw, I saw the post on it. It was pretty good. Yeah, it's all about the concept of time, right? You, me, Juan, we all have the same hours in one day, right? But the way that we utilize those hours equals the output that we can, you know, the way that we utilize those hours equals the output um, that, that we get. Should we wait for Nico, it was, right? Narcy, how do you say how do you say? Pronounce his name, Narcis. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's still in here. Somebody call him again. Yeah, maybe sometimes like Skype gives some uh, some trouble. Yeah, that's, oh. that's cool. Yeah, because it's his name is still on here, so. No, I don't think it is. Oh, it's part of the chat. It says. Oh, that's why. Yeah. yeah. I think if we do that. I'm calling him right now. There we go. Oh, there we go. He's back on with us. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry, guys. No, no, no worries. No worries, man. So yeah, we're like, like we were just talking, right? You just, you guys just gotta be able to focus, like, do the inventory on the amount of time that you guys have. It seems like you guys are, are, are you living with your family right now, or are you guys yeah, living? Okay, cool. Yeah. So obviously, there's things that you know you need to give attention to your family you know, maybe to your parents and do things for them, which is totally fine. But then take that chunk of time that you guys allocate to your business and then start asking yourself this one question. Okay. This, every time you do something, ask yourself this one question, how valuable, how, how valuable is this activity that I'm doing? Is it a money-making activity or is it simply just like a busy activity, right? So like running ads, for example, money-making activity creating videos for your products, money-making activity. Customer support, not a money-making activity, right? Just customer support. It is, I mean, somebody could say, hey, it's, it's important, you're servicing your customers, but if you just make a script, because Juan and I, at first, we were starting off responding to every single comment. It's like, a lot. It, yeah, it's it was crazy, every it's single message. But then we were like, okay, it seems like this is the main problems that everybody has and this is usually what they want to know where's my order how long and when can i expect it okay so we hire someone from uh you can get someone really good from online jobs at online ph jobs is pretty good yeah that, that, yeah that yeah, one is pretty yeah. solid and they already have experience fulfilling orders and doing customer support too for other other suppliers so a lot of times they'll actually teach you some stuff too that's that's what's that's what's good about it. When you start hiring some of these virtual assistants, they really do start to teach right. you a little bit. Um, but that's the first thing I would say. Customer support automatically should be your. F how, how how much time you guys spend on that a week now? Would you say? Well, first off, let's break down. Okay. Let's break down daily first. Yeah. 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 Customer be support. Be I think right now it's minimum one hour. Okay. I think. And is, does that include also responding to the, uh, the comments on your Facebook ads and responding to uh, messages on Facebook too? Well, Facebook ads, we don't get, uh, I mean, the, the comments that we get on Facebook, 
they're not asking for orders. They're just like tagging friends and saying, oh, that's really cool and things like that. Mm -hmm. There are no customer questions in the comments usually, so that if there's one, maybe it takes like 30 seconds or one minute. But mm -hmm. most of the the questions come through the Facebook page, yeah, okay. like direct messages and, and the email support, the customer email support. There's that's the the, the biggest chunk of time there. Yeah, and so yeah, when it comes to support, uh, it is like an, an important area of your business because one of the things that you can definitely thrive on and have a competitive advantage on is having great customer service, right? Like if you can respond to your customers yeah. right away and if you can always be available, that is, on, that is very valuable. Like customers value that. As somebody, customers would much rather work with someone that has better service and someone that doesn't, even if the price is different. Like if you guys have yeah. a, are more expensive but you have better service, I guarantee you, you would get more customers through that than for pricing. People much rather pay for service. Now, there's a couple ways that you can uh, narrow down the amount of time you have to spend on the service. So one of the ways do you guys already have a FAQ section on your store? Yeah. Okay, so that's already one. Do you guys have a order lookup option on in your store as well? Yeah, you have a tracking page. You put well, your you can put that. tracking code there, and it automatically shows all the tracking updates. Exactly. Nice. Okay, so you already have those. And do you guys offer live chat in your store? Live chat, not live, but we have like a, a bot on the so you have like a circle that you can click yeah. and then it opens the facebook chat yeah. and it has a bot and if you if the word order is in the message that they send then it starts a sequence like yeah. you have your tracking number yes no okay if you say yes then it asks you it takes you to the tracking page if you say no it asks you how how long ago did you place your order yes. and depending on how many days you select it says another message so that automates a lot of things, but yet sometimes some people like specific things and we have to go in there manually and, and answer them. So it's not live, but it's pretty quick. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, because yeah, one, having those on like your... Sometimes what happens is, and we realize because we, we, we saw this happening, is sometimes you'll have customers that go on your product pages and one thing will keep them like, will keep them behind from making the jump and actually making the purchase. And yeah. we would notice that as soon as we would respond to the email, that because the, they would email in to us asking the question, and we would notice as soon as we would respond to that email, they would buy right away because we would check the email and yeah. the name of the order, and they would buy. So having live support on your store can definitely help as well. Obviously, it's not as easy if you have to answer all the questions yourself, but if you can have someone that can definitely answer questions on like, specifically the live chat option on the product pages, because that's where it's most important. Like if they're just on the home page. You may not need to have it act because yeah. you can, depending on what live chat uh, service you use, you can choose where you want to have the live chat actually show up. So on the home page, it isn't as important, but on the product pages, it's for sure important because usually like someone will just have like one question, but if they can get it answered, you can instantly get them to buy after you answer that question. Now, obviously it wouldn't be uh, beneficial to have like you guys on there the whole time, like answering <laughs> all the questions. But one of the things you guys can do yeah. is you can find someone, for example, like online jobs, that's where we use, and you can get online great, jobs, yeah. yeah, you can get great people from there. And as far as training wise, obviously, you'll probably have to give them some training to have them to be, to teach them to be able to answer the question specifically for your store. But it's actually super simple. What you can actually do now, have you guys ever used um, Loom? It's a certain, it's like a certain online website no. called Loom. No. It's, it's a, just L O O M. Yeah, L O O M. So what, it's basically a, um, it's a software you can use to record, like screen share, quick video. So for example, if if you were gonna show me how to answer questions specifically and the answers that you want to give specifically to your customers, you can just it's a Google Chrome extension that's gonna be in your browser, and you just click the okay. Google. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you just click it, and then you can start uh, talking and showing on your screen like. For example, how you would want the question to be answered and how somebody could check for like a person's order or if they're asking a specific question about the product, how they can find the answer to that or how they can answer that. You can use Loom and it's super easy to do because now you can visually show your VAs and your staff and you can audio also teach them through audio how to answer all these questions. And it's a lot more effective that way and because what you can then do is you can save those same videos and you can use those videos for other staff that you also bring on yeah. to train them. And so that way you don't have to go and individually teach 
every single new person you bring on the team, like how to answer okay. certain questions, like how they should go about trekking orders. You can set up a system for that where everybody that comes in, you just have to have them walk through these videos and they already know how to answer the questions that they're going to get asked. Um, so that helps a lot with support because what that's going to do is allow that hour that you guys, you're spending doing that now. Now you can allocate that hour on, you know, either ads, products or on your store, which are like the main, you know, part of the main three components on the e-commerce ecosystem. So that right. should, you know, that should definitely help like having that system in place. Um, that as far as support goes, uh, because I, for I, would, I would do that today too. Like, I yeah, would, that's something you would definitely want to implement like as soon as possible, because even that hour, like think about that hour, what you guys can allocate that towards like creating new ads or new products. Um, yeah. that's something that you can implement really quickly and it's going to be worth it. Cause you can hire someone, you know, it, it all depends on the pricing, but it, the pricing that you'll hire someone for is going to make all the sense because even if you're paying someone like, let's say like a hundred bucks a week. If you have that person that can, if you can allocate an hour a day for a hundred dollars a week, I mean, if you do the math on that, I, I would do that. I'll do that all day. You know, an, an, an extra seven hours for a hundred bucks. If you guys split that, I'll do that all the time. So, and, and having someone there also, what you then want to set up also is um, having certain shifts for your staff as well, so that you can spread apart the hours that you have support available. So what worked really well for us is setting up a schedule where basically we would have uh, a staff work like the morning shift, but then right before the morning shift is over, we have somebody else that comes on and we set up like basically 24 okay. hour support. That way at any time of the day, if anyone asks any questions or they comment on any of the ads and we need to get the comments removed or any of that stuff, there's always somebody there to do it. Because what we would find is if we didn't have someone there like always available, we would find that there would be a delay between the time where someone would ask a question and then when they would get it answered and it would bring down the amount of um, orders that we would get from people that asked questions that actually ended up buying. And we realized that once we could get someone to answer any questions that anyone had about a product, about shipping, about anything, uh, we, once we were able to get that, that time where we were able to answer that questions down to like 30 minutes or like an hour or even sooner or like live chat right away, instantly started picking up some extra revenue from people that had those questions in mind before they actually went through with their purchase. Um, so that should definitely help you guys out. Another thing is, do you guys have a, a 1-800 number on your store? No, we don't have one. Okay. No. Yeah, so that automatically, well, that will automatically increase the conversions on your store because, so the one, and to give you guys some insight, for the 1-800 number, uh, you don't, there's two ways to do it. Like you can have it set up where it's basically automated and you don't have to be like on the phone, actually picking up the calls. You can always fo okay. forward them to reach out through email and then give them a quick response through email. And if you do that, there's no problem with like having them not actually someone on the phone, or if not, you can set up a specific like Google voice number that your, uh, your staff, they can log into Google for, and then they can answer the phone through there if you want to do that. Um, I would say you can probably test the automated route first. And then if anything, you can add in oh, yeah. someone to answer the okay. phone because as long as you're responding fast enough to the emails, it doesn't matter if you don't have someone answer on the phones, because I mean, at least for me personally, I'm already used to calling up businesses, right. And having automated yeah. like messages first before I even speak to anyone. Yeah. So it's not yeah. like you're doing something that people aren't used to. And the value of having uh, the one 800 number, really comes from having that phone number at the top and the perception it gives off, then really like people call in. Like you're, you're probably not gonna get that many people calling in. What's gonna, what the reason why it increases the conversions is because people know that if they have any questions, any doubt about anything, they actually have a number they can call up. That's more valuable than actually having someone on the other, on the other line of the phone actually picking up. Yeah. The fact that that number is there is way more valuable than that. So yeah. that should help. And the way you can do that, we, we can probably talk a little bit more about it. Like uh, after the call, like we have um, scripts that we use. What you can do is you can basically hire someone that has like a professional voice, like from Fiverr, okay. and you send them a script with like the most frequently asked questions. And then you'll have like a professional person picking up in uh, these calls with like an automated message. And you'll have, you, what you do is you set it up so that the main options that people call for all those questions are answered. For example, when somebody picks up our phone or somebody calls in, the first thing that happens is they run them through the frequently asked questions like, 
if they want to know the shipping times, automatically the, the person on the phone that's recorded, they're going to say, if you want to know about shipping, usually shipping takes this much time. If you had a question about the specific product, you could just email us email in at this email like it tells them everything they okay. need to know so that automatically helps out a ton because they can get the answers to the questions before they even have to speak to anyone you know so with support that definitely helps out a ton yeah. and having that in a mixture of live chat and uh quick quick responses will definitely help you guys out with uh with support any questions you have coming in uh, I was just going to add in there what, what really all these things that Juan just named and kind of went down the list with is trust, right? The biggest problem with uh, e-commerce, right, or getting someone to buy from you, right? Because the easiest or the hardest type of sale is that first sale that you make, right, to a customer, right? After somebody buys from you, when somebody's a customer of yours, it's a lot easier. It's actually, most people don't even know this, it's 10 times if not a hundred times easier to sell an existing customer than it is to sell a brand new prospect that's never heard of you before, that's never bought anything, that's never engaged with you before, right? But in order for someone to go from that point of prospect to an actual customer of yours, they have to be able to trust you, right? The reason why people love Amazon, why Amazon is a billion dollar corporate, oh, sorry, trillion dollar corporation, we don't say that too often, trillion dollar company is because people trust it. People trust Amazon, yeah. right? They trust the fact that, hey, for example, Juan doesn't get his package. He calls them up, hey, I didn't get it. They don't even go back and forth. Okay, no problem, sir. Do you want your money back or do you want us to ship you another one? Like, and to pick up right away. They don't even have automated bots, which is kind of crazy. So it's like you call up, boom, do you want your money back or do you want us to ship? Because they know the value of a customer. Right? They know that, hey, just by giving you this money back or giving you another product that didn't get shipped out for free, whether you're lying to them or not, is that that trust factor is always going to be there. And you're going to go back and shop there next week, next purchase you need to make. So what it is, right? When you start up a new Shopify store, a new e-commerce business, you have to be able to get other people to trust you. And trust comes from communication, right? Trust comes from having uh, credibility, having social proof, right? If I see somebody else doing business with you, I'm be like, okay, cool, like, you know what I mean? I trust them. If I see somebody else verified, let's say, has a blue, blue check or their Better Business uh, Bureau verified or they get tons of engagements, tons of, of product reviews, I'm like, okay, like, I'm not a guinea pig here. I, I have some trust. Another source of trust, which is what Juan went over, is customer support being able to get in touch with someone inside the company to support or to give me some type of service or support, right? That, without that, without being able, without uh, the prospect realizing or uh, feeling comfortable enough to the point where, hey, look, like if I have any problems with my order, I can reach out to them through chat support, I can email in, I can call them if I want, you know, they got their address on here. I could text them if I want. All these things is just like more and more trust, more and more like feeling a little bit easier. Like this is not some random company in a whole like, you know, hole in the wall e-commerce store that I'll never be able to get service from. Because as the market matures, right, as e-commerce becomes more and more common, now it's not just about product. It's also about the customer. You get what I'm saying? Like the average, the normal talk that's been around in e-commerce for the past year or two, it, it's all been Facebook ads and, and products. But very few people talk about customers. Very few people preach, hey, instead of trying to get, always get new customers, focus on making the customers that you have, the, you know, the happiest customers ever, because they're, they're 10 times easier to sell than an existing customer. I mean, than a brand new prospect, right? It's easier to sell an existing customer than a brand new prospect. So you gotta treat them better. You gotta give them more attention, give them better service than you would a brand new prospect. You know, somebody that's never bought from you before. And oftentimes we get to forget that. So in 2019, you guys need to focus on that. Hey, like, let's, let's, let's provide value for our customers instead of just trying to sell them stuff or 
or they bought from us and you know never contact them again let's see how we can you know uh, focus on that now also I do want to make sure that we we because um, I know the first thing that you guys mentioned before we started this call here uh, was customer support right how you guys can kind of handle that uh, I know you guys also mentioned uh, fulfilling orders and inventory yeah okay yeah so we can cover those I'm thinking if we we just because I'm not gonna be able to screen record the whole thing here. It's probably gonna end here in a second. We can just wrap this up and uh, have this. Yeah, we can just wrap YouTube, it up. Yeah, and then we yeah, can just cool. talk about the. No, we can still cover those areas, but we can just stop the screen. Re the screen record here for the video YouTube video, and then we can just keep talking all we were gonna talk about. So, um, yeah, we'll just wrap this up. So, one last question for everybody that's watching that I wanted to ask you guys before we kind of end it here is, what has what are some of the perks right now? that you guys are reaping from having your business uh, up and running and obviously now we're trying to get more systems in place which we're going to help you guys with but what are some of the benefits and some of the fruits that uh you guys are getting from you know taking the time to put in all this work and finally get the results for you guys personally like is this allowing you guys to have uh more free time spend more time with family like what's the ultimate what, what are what are you guys getting from it and like what's the ultimate goal for you guys like what do you guys strive to do with leveraging this opportunity do you want to go first, Mercedes? Go first. Tell me? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so right now um, we're still working really hard, so there's still no, like, we still don't have a lot of free time because all the free time that we have, we're still investing in on, on the business and we want to make it a lot bigger than it is right now. But, well, one of the perks that making a lot of profit now is that you can make it grow faster because you make more money and you have more the the more cash flow you have the more you, that you can invest and the more you, you can invest the the more results you can get and especially in drop shipping you can test more products and and get those winners faster yeah and the the ultimate goal for me personally would be to leave spain and probably i would like to get an, a u.s citizenship and go live there that's yes. why it's my my ultimate goal, and and also I would like and I would love to travel first before going to the U.S. Go visit the whole world because I've been here in Spain my whole life, and yeah, I would like to make this work a little bit more, make more money, and then finally move out from here, go travel, and then go to the U.S. and and stay there. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I'm yeah. sure at the rate that you guys are at now, that's not going to be a problem. I hope so. Hope so. Yeah. Say say that one more time, Narcy. Sorry. Say that one more time. You cut off there. Um. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um. For me, like for my opinion, it's pretty much the same. Like, I just want to feel free, like completely. Just be able to decide where I want to be, when I want to be, and with who I want to be. Right. All the time, or as much as I can, at least. Nice, <laughs> right nice. now, I just can't. Like in the world that we live today, if you don't have financial freedom, you are not free. Absolutely. Like you can believe you are, but you are. You can you are kind of, but you are not really. So, I would say that my biggest motivation is just to be able to to do whatever I want. Like for example, right now I'm here, then I want to decide that I want to go to New York. Um, for five days and then I want to go to Hawaii and then I'm going to go to Florida, <laughs> wherever yes. and be able to do that, to actually do that, I think that's, that's my goal. Can like, you see my cold tour in that? be free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely delete that. That's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to post it later. That's awesome. Okay, <laughs> so what we'll do is... Um, that's pretty, we'll wrap this one. Let me just stop this here. All right, guys. So that was the end of the student interview. I hope you guys got value from it. Uh, I'd love to get some feedback from you guys. Let me know down below if you guys would want to see a lot more videos like this where I share, you know, some of the results from some of the students and clients we've been working with and, you know, have them come on and kind of share their journey with you guys. Uh, obviously, I want to make sure you guys are getting value from this type of content. So uh, if you guys like this video, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a thumbs up. And of course, uh, if you guys got any value from it and you guys like these kind of videos, let me know in the comments down below. And if so, obviously, I'll keep doing videos like this with, you know, not only students that are already getting results, but also students that are kind of in the middle of, you know, working through and having 
going from where they're just getting started to the point where they're actually about to get results, right? People that aren't obviously immediately getting results because I know it's easier to hear about people that are already like crushing it and doing really well. But I know also some of you guys may wanna hear about people that are just getting started and you know, how you can, how we can help them and help some of you guys also go through that point where you know you're just getting started you don't have any results and you know you kind of just got to the point where now you've gotten a few sales and now your business is actually up and running so um, let me know if you guys want to see more of that and if you haven't already make sure you join the fam smash that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video